Hey guys, looks like we are uh, live and streaming. Yep, there's the seconds counter ticking, ticking down. All right, uh, nobody's joined quite yet because we just started up. And so a uh, little quick intro to, to show you the gear. Sherlock is the soap and it's a silk tallow version. Game changer, four gap solid bar. Saponificio Veracino Badger Brush. And the blade is going to be a feather. So that's the uh, details. And then the post shave is going to be Intrepid Man from Sterling. I am curious if that's going to go well with the Sherlock. It's a, uh, it's not, yeah, I don't, I don't guess it's light. It's got some strength to it. So I bet they play well together. All right, so I'm just going to set up my gear while we wait for folks to join. So here's my feather, and it is fairly young for me at least. I'm about to do the sixth shave. Peter Cook, hey there. Hey there. Now you're all the way over in, uh, Peter, you're over in South China. Very cool. The signals going across the world. Major mincemeat, man. I'm glad you got in on this one. I think you missed uh, yesterday. Peter, yes. Very good. So I'm just loading everything up. I'm going to reintroduce all the gear in just a minute after we get a few more people to join. Where'd that feather blade go? Peter, what is the time over where you are right now in South China? It's just crazy. I don't know what Celsius means. Okay. Oh, 11. Okay. Well, yeah, you're halfway around the world, so it, for me, it's nighttime. For you, it's uh, lunchtime, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Almost lunchtime. Pretty wild. Okay, so here is the uh, razor with the feather loaded in it. This is the Game Changer head, and it's got the 84 solid bar. I used it two shaves ago. Yesterday, I used the Open Comb Game Changer 68, and I discovered that I like the solid bar better at least so far but one good one good test and kind of an impression needs a little bit more evidence so we're going to repeat today with the 84 this is a custom handle i had made by a rus drunk bear um, over on the other side of the world and he his ebay thing is not going on anymore and maybe that's due to covid or something like that Ah, uh, 30. Okay. Yeah. It's chilly. <laughs> really? That is chilly. <laughs> no sandwich. <laughs> That's right. Hey, uh, guys, pro tip. I went to the Dollar Tree and I got this little tote for a buck and it, I use it to carry all my shave gear into the bathroom. I put my soap over here. I got this toilet roll and I put a little bit of toilet paper in the bottom so that I can put my bro any of my brushes in it and see now the hairs, the bristles don't get caught up inside the container there. And then I can carry all my gear to the, to the bathroom. And then over here, I'll put my cell phone and my balm and splash or blade pack or whatever. Another little uh, pro tip. Appreciate that mince meat. Oh, 50. Yeah, that makes more sense. Middle of the day. I think that's in kind of our temperature these days, too. This is one of those credit card wallets made out of aluminum. I just got it at a grocery store for a dollar, and I actually bought two of them, though I don't know where the other one is, because I thought, man, it's going to be good for something. And you know what it's good for? Blade storage. And they're easy to see. And then when they get closed, Mr. Jones, welcome snap shut and they, they keep even if they tumble around a little bit because there's enough compression holding them all together the blades will be uh, just fine and I'll double stack some of them because one of them will be like uh, you'll see a feather 
in there and that'll be my marathon feather but my um my kind of testing razors feather will be right under it so that's why some of them you see two in each slot yeah i appreciate that the game changer is uh his uh, friendship's favorite razor mr jones uh, i wouldn't be surprised i really Excuse me, I really like it myself. Let's see, you don't need to be that high that way. All right, that way when I'm holding my bowl and working things. All right, so got my uh, medicine dropper to add water to the lather. Let's get this brush soaking. Now it has really soft tips. It doesn't have a lot of density, so it doesn't take a long time to soak. Then I have a uh, washcloth I put over on a little shelf uh, where I put my wet things so they can sit and dry. We have the uh, bowl as usual. Linus, welcome, welcome. Uh, the 3D bowl, 3D printed bowl as usual. And today's soap. Now let's, uh, since we've got a few, guy, a few guys here, let's uh, go through the gear we'll be using today. The silk tallow is the newest base from Chiseled Face. And this is a Sherlock, and I love that scent quite a bit. So I just figured let's use it. And I really think what Chiseled Face Guy said, Ron, I believe is his name, he actually tuned in to my 365th Shave Live, my first live uh, broadcast. It was really a privilege to have him on there. And, haha, yes, I do. I do. When I can get Guinness on draft, I love it. Um, that's usually what I pick if I, if I go uh, to, for a drink somewhere, if I see Guinness on draft, I like it. Um, so Ron said, very interesting about the chiseled face old tallow version that's been around for so long and this new silk tallow version. Cause when I started using this, I was like, this is really wonderful, a creamy lather. And it, it was, it's, it's competing with the newer bases and that sort of thing. It's really where I wanted the chiseled face to go because the, uh, the older version is nice, but it's, it's not as, a, as creamy and luxurious feeling of lather. It's, it's wonderfully purposeful. It's very slick. It's just not luxurious feeling. And with so many of the wonderful scents they have, like Sherlock and Midnight Stag and Ghost Town Barber and Summer Storm and just tons of great scents. I was uh, hoping that they would really kind of upgrade their base a little bit. And he said that if you're looking for longevity, if you're looking for a soap that's better in terms of economy, get the old version, which he likes a lot, and he's planning on keeping around, get the old one. This one's going to be used up quicker because it's a like a softer soap. And so I think that's great of him to go kind of public about that uh, and, and, uh, just give us the knowledge because some people might have different priorities and I don't know how, how many uses I'm going to get, but uh, I'm, maybe I'll have to find out. HD shaves. Welcome. I'm afraid this is not a favorite gear shave. It kind of is because I really like Sherlock. It's on my top sense. And I really like this uh, base from chiseled face. Uh, and I guess it's kind of a, ending up to be a favorite shave. Um, because this brush is one of my top favorite brushes from the uses I've had it so far. Um, but this is not my favorite razor, the Game Changer 84 Gap Solid Bar. This is a R U Rust Drunk Bear Titanium Handle. Um, I think it's titanium. Uh, custom made by him back when he had his eBay shop going. All <laughs> right, right. All right, so this has been very much used by somebody else. I got it used. I've still got the Sherlock uh, old tallow to use up. All right, so let's uh, keep the razors loaded, get my face wet. We were talking online today on uh, the wet shaving daily questions. Somebody was having trouble with Mitchell's wolf. I sure hope that he's able to find some good information. Uh, this brush holds a lot of water. I'm going to shake out a good bit of it. There we go. Man, this sucker displays easily and uh, 
Oh, Sherlock is so good. Now, one thing about this silk tallow base I have learned is that my usual standard of 30 seconds often doesn't necessarily get me as much lather as I want. Let's go for 45 seconds this time. Zen Shaves is joining. What is my favorite razor, Jair or Jair? Is that, if that's a J, is that a Jair? Is that how you pronounce your name? Anyway, yeah, I love the Sherlock scent. Here, so we will go to 30 seconds on the next minute. Mayor with a J. Oh, Jair. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Thank you very much for that. It feels like a hard soap. And so to me, it, it didn't instinctively seem like one that would get used up quickly. But that is that is Ron's um, kind of opinion, uh, the maker of Chiseled Face. Oh, it did. Oh, OK. Gotcha. And there we go. That's 45 seconds. That's what it looks like. Now, uh, if you see that, that's not all that wet. In retrospect, it's possible I may have wanted to add a little bit of water, a little bit more water into the mix, but I'll bet I'll be okay. Oh, man, that's so good. About a day and a half of growth on the face today. Yeah, HD, me as well. My usual 30 second load uh, for kind of unknown soaps doesn't quite get me enough. So we'll see if uh, 45 seconds is better. Mayor with a J, Jayer, Jayer. I have to put it in, put it in my brain. Try to remember. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's funny. Five grams of soap per shave. With the old midnight stag, when I did that usage test, I figured out I used about half a gram per shave. That would be curious with this new base if I continue with that. Uh, why not? Let's go with two teaspoons of water right into the mix here. Now, I do not have any complaints about the silk tallow performance. Uh, I find a few of the new bases with so many butters and things to sometimes be a little slow. I think I experienced that with the Tatara razors a little bit. It wasn't bothersome, but it was just noticeable a little bit. But as long as I water them pretty well, they, they don't slow down, slow down too much. Now, yeah, see, look at that. That's a 45-second load. With most other soaps, I'd have a lot more lather right here. I may have to switch to, uh, now you know what? I don't think 45 seconds is enough. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scrape out the sides of the brush there. Let's jump back into that soap. My memory is reminding me how I've had to rescue this soap before. So I think adding 15 seconds to my usual rhythm is not going to be enough. Let's do another 30, 30 seconds. So we're going from 25 to 55 on the clock there. Oh man, uh, the scent notes on this one. I think I'm going to 55, 35 to Am I going to, I can't remember. I think I said 55, 25 to 55 is probably what I'm doing. And there we go. All right. So we added more. This soap just needs more. It's probably got some of those pesky moisturizers and things like that in it, getting in the way of the soap becoming a good lather. Oh, thank you. There is no more for pasting in the descriptions, man. Damp earth 
tobacco, caramel, black pepper, leather, oak moss, orange, honey, rose. I mean, come on. That's just a wonderful blend. It's genius. It really is. Yeah, I don't usually go back to the tub, but I, I just haven't written down my form. Yeah, see, look at this. This is a lot better. So that's a uh, minute and 15 seconds of load time. which is three or four times as much as I usually need to do. So knowing that ahead of time, I can load a little bit more in the beginning. I do not like soaps with a, a dominance of cinnamon. It really needs to be sweetened up or changed in some way. I'm the same way with foods. Like my wife can stir her dumb cinnamon coffee with uh, a spoon and then she'll put it in my coffee and I can taste it and I don't like it. So I'm not a cinnamon guy. It needs to, if it's a component, if it's a, a supporting piece, then I, I'm usually okay. But if it's dominant, then I am usually not all that happy with it. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Some cinnamon... Uh, some folks have a hard time with cinnamon in terms of their skin and all that. Uh, since this one has a lot of butters and oils and skin goodies, I'm not going to get it as it's already pretty wet. Look at that. So let's just make sure I have a good mix here. Uh, Jeffrey also jumped in with the with the ingredients. Uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Try that. So it's a great source. I love that because so many makers, whenever they will take a product off the shelves because it's been discontinued or it's not in stock, then that description, that scent description disappears from their website. And so you lose your resource. And so I'm glad to try that. Soap is in existence. That's for sure. Our very own, your friendly pyro is, is the worker of that one. This is not very much lather for me. <laughs> I usually end up working a lot more than this, but this is going to be plenty to do the job. Oh, okay. American pie. You know, I haven't actually tried anything from Apex Alchemy yet, but yeah, if it's dominant cinnamon, then however, if there are apple notes and sweet notes in there, then I might like the cinnamon. All right. Well, this lather looks great, right? Let's look at, let's pull it up and see how it falls. Pretty fluid. I don't know if the resolution is kind of crappy. Yeah, it looks like it made a wall and fell pretty easily. So let's go for it. A little bit of water on the face. And remember, you got to type out my full YouTube username if you want to have my... Um, I be taken to a highlighted comment at sugar daddy underscore shaves sugar daddy with no vowels of course oh man it just feels good it's pretty loose as we can see here so if I can just remember to load this guy a little bit longer then lathering this soap won't take as long HD, I bet you're right, man. Would This would be one that most, it would be a little bit more difficult to overload. Yeah, feels great. I mean, it's slippery enough to where it's, it's slipping off, you know, so it's wet enough. But the, the slickness is, is excellent. Creamy, very nice. Now, one common thing that I, especially on the other bulletin boards, when people talk about face lathering versus bowl lathering, they just assume that bowl latherers mix the lather up in the bowl and then just paint it on the face and then quickly go at shaving. And that's never what I've ever done. I, as you can see, I work it into my skin. I get 
And this way I get to experience the brush and I, I get that lather into my skin to protect. And I get to experience the full potency of whatever scent is in the soap as well. I think we're good. It's really funny, this guy. There are places on my face where it feels like maybe it could use a little bit more water, but then other places say, nope, you're good. I guess that's what this kind of buttery soap, buttery lather does. Oh, man, that's so good. What's dominant? What's dominant? Before those notes go away, what do I pick up? The tobacco, a little bit of the caramel, pepper, leather, I don't pick up any rose. It's a little helper, I guess, in the background. It's just such a good mix. I'll bet. I'll bet if I had to try to name the notes in this blind, I bet I couldn't come up with too many. All right. So we've also left this set on our face for a little bit and we can retrieve some excess. And sometimes this is a great test. If I pull it out right here and it's really dry, then I know I need to, I can add more water if I want. And we have the, the razor. This guy can get a little slippery. All right, so yesterday was the open comb 68. Today, back to the solid bar 84. I believe, if memory serves me correctly, this might feel a little bit more consistent, a little more solid. Uh, a firm blade and so then it's not going to offer as much fluctuation in the at the micro level as it moves and so I think that's what helps it to give me a a smoother feel and this shave is similar to yesterday's because I was working yesterday with more hair similar to right now Wonderful combination here with the feather and the game changer. Yeah, the edge just feels more, feels more solid, feels more under control, consistent. So there it is. Looks like I like the solid bar better than the open comb, even though if you look at the base plate, it looks like the open comb might actually have a little bit more uh, stability for some reason. It just doesn't translate in the shave. Uh, in terms of blade support, I believe that, you know, here we have some of these uh, canals here and with the open comb, there's a little bit more support in those places. Hey, welcome, sort of. Very cool. I am SMS has entered the chat. Very cool. Mike is here. Wolf. Yeah, exactly. Let that brush spend as much time on your face as it does in the bowl. All right, rinse. Just kind of a half rinse. Oh, man. I'm really curious what the Intrepid Man from Sterling, that's the splash that I'm going to use today. I'm going to uh, really curious how that reacts with the lingering smell of the Sherlock. If I don't like it, I've got the Sherlock EDP that I can hit it with. Yeah, plenty of lather. So it looks like a minute and 15 seconds might be something to start off with next time. American smells like apple pie. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginning product from them. Uh, okay. Give alchemical romance a try. Chocolate and truffle. Okay. Yeah, I haven't tried anything from Apex. So uh, maybe I'll have to. <laughs> B.S. I love you. <laughs> yes, a bowl deserves some good badger hair, and that's what we've got today. I love this brush. I, I waited for a while to get it, but it has nice, soft tips. As you can see, it's moving easily. It splays easily and comfortably. If you've got a luxurious lather, then this brush is going to show it off really well. Uh, the tips don't have to gel or anything. I don't expect them to. Uh, and it's it's got a it's a big knot. It's a 26 millimeter, but it kind of looks bigger. But it doesn't have a ton of density. 
And I like that. It's got, it holds a lot of water, a lot of lather, and it just doesn't feel like a wall of badger on my face. It feels like it's caressing my face and, um, and then just a fluffy bunny tail kind of way. I like it. All right. So cross grain. My, uh, my grain is standard on my uh, cheeks. And then over here, it turns down this way and goes across. And so when I do this down here, or when I do a north-south down here, it's actually cross grain. I think a lot of people, I try to say it a lot on my channel. A lot of people think, you know, that uh, with the grain is north-south. I need a haircut badly. Yeah, zipping across nicely. I didn't get uh, a ton of the uh, stubble taken down on that first one, but it is definitely going to make up for it uh, here in the second pass. And I'll have a nice face to work on, very smooth in the third pass. Has a nice feel. And we have the slickness left behind right now. I'd be careful with double shaving it. I would put some lather back on there. It's a, a thicker kind of buttery kind of residual slickness left on my face right here. And rinse. Oh man. There are some soaps that I, I just, it just get me every time I smell them. During the shave, when I when I bend down to rinse, that's really really when I get a good dose of that scent, because I'm just uh, I'm I'm down there and the, my hands are working all over my face, and that's a great time to get repumped up about a great scent. Sherlock, man, I wonder if when he was creating this, I wonder if he knew that it was going to be such a hit. I wonder if he was like. Man, this has interest. This has manliness. This has, it's not like very many other things. It's kind of like a few things where you can recognize some notes, but then it's a departure. It's different, but it's familiar and it's awesome. Wonder if he knew how awesome it was going to be in the beginning. Sorov, are you saying I need to try some of that Apex Alchemy stuff? I'll have to research. I know I've seen him a lot on the thing, but I just haven't really checked him out very much. Man, this lather's perfect. The smoothest slickness here, tremendous. That's great. I'm shaving too fast today. <laughs> Cross grain again. I could go against the grain on my cheeks. It's about the only place on my face I could do that with. But I just don't because this shaves it close enough. Especially with the feather in there. I am getting just a little bit of a reaction. And so there may actually be a part of this scent that I may be slightly uh, annoyed with in terms of my skin, but I don't care because my nose loves it. And then on the third pass, we will attack my trouble spot from a different angle. It took me a year or two to figure out the most effective way to hit my trouble spot right here. Adam's apple, a little valley, not very much support in there. And apparently my hair just really lays down close to the skin. And then I can take the beard lather and hit it one more time. And I don't want to overshave. 
Now, this one does kind of feel like a balm, this lather. For those of you who like to kind of bathe in it after the shave, this will be a good one to do that with. I am definitely splaying the brush, Mr. Jones, uh, when I have it on my face. I don't, I don't splay it a lot. I see a lot of guys press it in and it is really splayed. I'm guessing maybe 50 to 60% splay, maybe 70. Here, let's, let's look at that with a little bit more, uh, more thought. So this is my usual kind of splay, right? Like this. And so a little bit more than that. So yeah, I'd say, that is probably about 50% maybe. And I def that is definitely my policy. Uh, if I have a brush that doesn't splay, I'm usually not gonna keep it around very long. I do like the splay. It just feels, uh, on the right brushes, it just feels tremendous. Major Mince Meat update on the Treat Platinum. 90 shaves on it by Monday. Man, that's awesome. So what, right after the... Uh, yeah. Okay. So the beginning in January, you'll be able to hit the century mark with that. Congratulations, man. Ah, <laughs> man, sort of. Thank you for that. That's really kind. Kind of you. I do uh, enjoy it. I do enjoy trying everything under the sun. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know what? I don't think uh, HD, I have experienced really the skin tightening aspect of the silk tallow ingredients. I did read that when he initially uh, mentioned it, and I, I don't really get that as much, maybe because my skin has a whole bunch of natural oils to it. Thought I was allergic to the Sherlock frag too, but I think it was just the base. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yes, that beard lather, man. That's good stuff. Yes, yeah. Glass lather can do that as well. Greenland, how cool is that, man? I know we've got South China represented. Uh, we've got the UK. Greenland, man, that's excellent. Excellent, man, all over the world. Plus, plus, nice. Uh, major mince meat. You said you meant Friday. Uh, oh, okay. By Friday update on the treat. I have, I'll have 90 shaves on it by Friday. Gotcha. Right. Oh, okay. Roger that. Roger that. Heavens are mute. He was on there. Our first, uh, our first one. Welcome. Very cool. I think you might be somebody that I've communicated with before on like, uh, Somewhere where your username is different, like Reddit and stuff. Oh, Snow Blizzard is in Greenland. Now, you know what I've heard? I've heard that Greenland Greenland and Iceland are opposites. Greenland is mainly winter and Iceland is mainly green. I wonder if that's true. Man, Greenland, how cool is that? Snow Blizzard. Uh, it's it's kind of chilly here, but it's not anything like a snow blizzard. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So, man, the scent of that Sherlock is all around. I love the fact that it's going to be resident. I love the strength of the chiseled face. I really do. Um, I really need to do a usage test on this and compare it to the uh, how much soap I use per shave. Surely, loading for a minute and 15 seconds. You know what? I got the tallow base, the old school uh, base, the original base. I don't know what we should use for it. The, his other base. Um I got down to, I think, a seven or 10 second load with that B2 Zenith bore brush. And using the soap every day, obviously it was easier to lather. And so if I, I probably need to increase that a little bit if I came into that same soap without having used it every day. But it was seven to 10 seconds and that was what I needed for four or five passes of nice lather. It wasn't even skimpy lather. I learned that. Uh, in 2019 with a chiseled face midnight stag uh, challenge in August. And so uh, that is a big difference. Seven to 10 seconds of loading versus a hundred more seconds than that with the silk tallow. How about that?
<laughs> oh, major mince meat. Yeah. Get some of that double time with the inclement weather. That's right. So we just did three passes and here's what I have left. And this is pretty much the perfect amount for me. A little bit of margin left over to, uh, uh, to rescue a lather or, and I just find out, even if I figured out exactly how much loading to do to get only the amount of lather I needed, that lather usually is just not as nice as when I have an extra pass left. Somehow that extra margin gives me a better lather. And I'm cool with that. All right. And man, I forgot to keep track of my water. I got a feeling we're looking at, this is two teaspoons or 10 milliliters per syringe. And I believe I used it twice and then half. And so that would put us at five teaspoons of water. <laughs> All right, so uh, Sherlock is sticking around. I love that. Let's see how it combines with Intrepid Man. And by the way, I do really like these aftershave bottles instead of those kind of squarish ones that they had. I like this shape quite a bit from Sterling. Intrepid Man wasn't quite as awesome as I thought maybe it might be, um, but, but I still like it a good bit. A, a duplicate of the uh, original Santal by what creed? There we go. Now let's check out the closeness. Oh, yeah, that's a good shave. That's a good one. The uh, uh, stubble cut down really well, even in my area here. Just a little bit extra length on a few of the tips because this is a nasty zone. I can easily irritate it too much by trying to overwork the area. Um, would I recommend Intrepid Man to a Sterling fan? I think uh, I. Th it depends. I guess it always depends. If you like, if they like the cologne, the soap doesn't have a big, strong hit um, of the of the santal of the sandalwood type stuff. Uh, what I get immediately is a zestiness, the same kind of zestiness that I get with Baker Street and um, and uh, some other one, and and so and I don't like that hit quite as much. And so I have to wait and I start enjoying it once that initial hit starts wearing down and I get those middle notes. That's when I really start to enjoy the scent. And so if you uh, have somebody that, is, that likes that zestiness, then they're probably going to be attracted to it uh, right away. And otherwise, it's a good, I think it's a good, uh, you know, cologne type scent from Sterling. And I have the EDT as well. And that does the same thing with that kind of zesty hit up front. Yeah, man. Well, you know what? Sterling samples. Get a, get a sample of that soap uh, on, a, on, a, on a Sterling order. Get on, get on that. I'm really glad because Sterling's alcohol can sometimes give me some issues. Um, my face is, my skin is not tough enough to sometimes withstand um, a harsh aftershave. And Sterling can sometimes be guilty of that. And I'm really glad. Sometimes it even brings up a little bit of redness. And I think it brought up a little bit here, but it's it's not, I'm not feeling it right now. And I'm glad that it is going to combat my uh, oily skin. So I'm happy about that. Uh, okay, Swarov has a tough, coarse skin, but a sensitive beard. You sound like all the noobs, man. The, I, I've got a sensitive, I got, they, they say coarse hair. I've got tough, coarse hair and sensitive skin. No, you just got crappy technique, usually. <laughs> all right, well, there we go. Uh, that is the shave, and I did pretty much confirm what I thought. Uh, and for those of you who may, jo may have joined late, I've learned that with this style of uh, showing you guys stuff that I should uh, restate some of the some of the gear 
um, for those uh, late arrivals. Intrepid Man is the alcohol-based aftershave today. And the Sherlock from Chiseled Face. And this is the Silk Tallow version from them. And I am such a huge fan of this scent that it is nutballs. The uh, razor was a feather. and This was the sixth use. And the um, razor, uh, the blade was, of course, the feather. And the Game Changer 84 solid bar is the head. And this happens to be a titanium handle from uh, Drunk Bear uh, from eBay. I, uh, he had a design similar to this on his site, and I asked for custom alterization, alterations to it. I think I increased the width a little bit, and I increased the length a little bit. I'm really happy that I uh, guessed right on those attributes. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Appreciate that, guys. The, ah, okay, now here's a little trick that I do. The aftershave is obviously uh, often potent and strong, and with a mild soap, it can easily overwhelm the soap. Want to see how well they go together? Go back to the soap tub. Sometimes you'll also get some lessons in how your nose treats smells because sometimes you go back here and smell something totally different than when you started out because the aftershave has affected your senses. Oh yeah. The, um, that kind of high floral note, not, not floral. Uh, something is, it's much more dominant right now. It's the, the, uh, Intrepid Man is muting kind of those leathery notes. Maybe some of the tobacco notes. That's interesting. Hmm, cool. And yeah, in my opinion, these go really well together. Very cool. Nice. Hey, uh, here's a little something. The other day I used the lavender scent from Declaration Grooming, the semicolon soap. Powerful lavender scent and i believe it's got something else mixed in with it maybe vetiver i can't remember but i uh and and of course the lavender was very strong during the shave big old potent cloud of lavender around me but it was a nice lavender that it, i think maybe it was a little bit too intense for me uh, but it wasn't pure lavender it was helped and and given kind of an earthy feel i think by that vetiver and uh, I followed it up with the agar balm from Sterling. And that was awesome. I really enjoyed the oud agar type scent. It was a wonderful mix with the lavender and the, and the vetiver. We know that vetiver and oud go well, but I didn't know that lavender would do so well. It was a wonderful transition. So if you have that combo, give it a shot if you want. Ah, yeah, there we go. We got some semicolon in use. This is a little yogurt cup. We, O-U-I, is the brand from Yoplait. And it's a perfect size for most brushes. And because it tilts in at the top, wider on the bottom, it holds the brush instead of letting it be diagonal. It usually holds it pretty vertically. I find that very handy. And because this brush is not quite so dense as uh, many of the declaration type brushes and the high density brushes from, you know, Maggard and, uh, you know, Chisel and Hound and all those different ones, this is a little quicker to clean, a little quicker to rinse well. Oh, and there's some note in the Sherlock that just jumped right through the Intrepid Man. Really nice. All right, so this is what this guy looks at right after a good sling out in the sink. Now some towel work. And there we go. Plenty of nice brushes, bristles, nice and soft. Awesome. Sorry if that was too loud. 
Ah, yeah, those yogurts. Okay. Nice. Vanilla, I can see that. Coconut's not my fave. I don't eat yogurt too much because what I want to do is add in all those uh, cool crunchy things that aren't as good for you as the yogurt. Home like Calibri 0.8. The Wizomet, yeah. Okay, Perrazzo. Simpson Chubby. Oh, man, see, you're hitting Perrazzo and Simpson. Those are not exactly my, my favorites. But that balm is a solid balm. I love how it's available everywhere. But, hey, look, all that stuff, it worked for you. That's what it's about. There's no rules here. It's all subjective. It's all relative. That combo works for you. That is great. Okay, everything was new. <laughs> Sometimes there's too many variables when you do that, right? But uh, I'm glad it worked out for you. Sig, that's great. I have not tried. Yeah, I haven't tried the home like. Haven't tried any of the home like stuff. I've seen them for sale on the used market. So definitely people are trying them and maybe it's not matching quite with what they want. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll bet it's decent stuff. I think I. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was talking to somebody and they were really a big fan of it. Ah, his daughter. Yeah, that's nice. When your daughter picks the gear, that's tremendous. That's a blast. All right. As usual, I'm going to disassemble. And Mr. Friedberg, I don't guess, made, made it tonight. So uh, he likes the, the aspect of the game changer where it covers the blade tabs. So my, my earlobes are safe tonight, thanks to the ever watchful construction of the game changer. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say no to your daughter. That's awesome. And she gets to kind of participate a little bit, knowing that Daddy picked, used the stuff that she picked. That's special. Do that anytime, every time. Oh, okay. That's a different para. Yeah, okay. I have not uh, experienced that Perazzo line of soaps. Give us some word about that, man. Uh, 12. Okay. My son is about to turn 10. Very, oh man, see, Sig, you better enjoy that, man. In a few years, she's not going to care one fig about shaving soaps or you, right? <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes sometimes? <laughs> enjoy that, man. Savor those moments. Okay. Smell like an old man after. Uh, now, she might like Intrepid Man then. It smells like younger men, younger, more vigorous men. I don't think it's as uh, classic. My guess is that it's not as classic as uh, as that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Hey, uh, Sig in Greenland, what's the price of Parado? Uh, where you can get it? Are you having to order it online? Do you have it in stores? Uh, here in America, I think Parado is really the normal Parado line is really overpriced for what you get, and there are just so many better choices. But in Europe, I think it's a good for its value because you it's just a few euros. Uh, how is it in Greenland? Ah, uh, yeah, eBay. Roger that. Gotcha. Be cool if you had a, a Greenland-based soap maker, you know. See, I the super formula, man. I want to try that as well. I have heard from some pretty good folks that it is definitely better. Okay, Ukraine seller. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to take my... I showed this to the guys in the beginning. For at the Dollar Tree, I got one of these baskets and so I can take my soap put it here I have a toilet roll with some toilet paper in it and so it holds the brush up where the hairs aren't being messed up three to four weeks well you know what it doesn't take too much soap and product before all of a sudden you have lots of stuff to keep you entertained while you wait for other stuff to get there so in the shaving world maybe three to four weeks isn't too bad 
I bet there aren't too many shave stores in Greenland. We'd barely have it in the U.S. All right. Oh, and it's time to take my take my sharpie and put another notch on the feather. This is one I'll just run to about ten and then get a new one. One for evaluating razors and testing and things like that. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hoping for one store. One store. Okay. Obviously, we need to start the Maggards Greenland Annex. We need to do that. That can't go wrong, right? All right. So, as you, uh, I showed this to you guys at the beginning. This is a card wallet for credit cards, but I can fit three blades per row. And so I love to keep my blades at the ready. Great for traveling. Yeah, Peter's in South China. European stuff is pricey to get to him. Reassembling the razor. You know what I'm interested in doing? Getting one of those guys that does the custom handles and have them thread it with the Fatip threading, which is different than pretty much all the other razors, so that I can have a nice handle like this on my uh, Fatip razors, which I'm so fond of. Shaving or having a country. I think it's shaving. <laughs> yeah, that's this is the wrong place to ask that question if you want the answer to be country, right? Uh, a little plug for the bowl. If you are curious and want to know where to get this, the uh, I will paste, eventually, I'll get around to pasting in the comments, the URL, but you can go to thingiverse.com, thing, I-V-E-R-S-E.com, look up Roger Quinn, R-O-G-E-R-Q-U-I-N, I believe is his username, and you'll find this bowl. I helped him to uh, design it. I helped just a little bit, and uh, I, I also got him to make uh, three sizes, and this is the bigger size, and you can print it yourself if you have the equipment, or you can use an online service to do it. And I am a huge fan of it. You know what? Quarter teaspoon. I wonder maybe if I should scoop this silk tallow base sometime. Because sterling, for instance, and some other soaps take less than a quarter teaspoon measure. Holy cow takes a quarter teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Uh, several other soaps take exactly a quarter teaspoon. I wonder if this guy requires so much more loading. How many, how many, uh, you know, how much would he take? How many, how many, how many? Oh, really? Oh, okay, the bowl. Sick, are you saying you ordered the bowl yesterday? That's pretty cool. Uh, I did participate in the Paganini's violin uh, drop there, Mr. Mincemeat. Um, Major Mincemeat. Remember that from uh, How I Met Your Mother? You know, anytime there was, you know, this is a major catastrophe. Major catastrophe. Um, I did, I believe, pick up on that. I, his story about the single note really intrigued me. I, my guess is I'm not going to like this up too much, but uh, right now my mail is running super slow, um, and so it hasn't gotten to me yet. I did, I believe I jumped in on that, uh, the revamp, the reshelving that he did, the restocking that he did. I didn't get in on in the beginning, but um, I did place an order for the restock. 
And so hopefully that's going to come and I'll be able to enjoy that. Olive green. Yeah. Uh, Roger actually was the one who printed this bowl for me uh, and he sent it to me. I have a video out there that talks about what to look for in a shaving bowl, uh, different aspects. And then he appreciated my work there. It really helped him. And so he was very kind and generous and sent me uh, the bowl, printed it himself uh, for me. And I'm very uh, grateful for that. And so, yeah, you and, and so I got the uh, one color that he was using, the silver, the gray, um, but uh, very cool. Olive green. That's nice. Oh, hey, with these kind of bowls, somebody figured out that with plastic and this is common to know uh, with some people, uh, you can use acetone an acetone treatment and it smooths it out. Now, I don't know how that works, but you can if you're interested in because you can see it has kind of the printing ridges. Uh, from the 3D printing process, and acetone can just smooth all those out almost like glass. Uh, and because of its chemical nature, you have to be careful with it. And so I would research that very carefully before I did it. But uh, very cool. Yeah, you got the regular size. Well, um, I like big bowls, and um, I cannot lie. But uh, uh, the regular size, very cool. I bet you'll be happy. <laughs> I still have the How I Met Your Mother uh, Slaps Giving episode on my on my home server. Uh, even I, even that we quit watching that uh, show years ago. I still got that. That was just so hilarious with the uh, slap bet and stuff that they have. Uh, Sig did his first vid yesterday. Okay, Lucky Dice Shave. Six razors, six blades, six brushes, six soaps. Oh, okay. You roll the dice and just shave with whatever. That's interesting. Uh, acetone melts PLA plastic. Okay. Okay. See, we've got somebody with some knowledge there. <laughs> you just got slapped. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was so funny. All right. I think I am all uh, packaged up here. Any final questions before we roll on? Man, I love this. It's really cool to talk to you guys. Really cool. It's especially cool when we get folks from all over the world to join in. Peter, thanks. And uh, we've got a Peter in South China. We've got a Peter in uh, Peter Sutcliffe is a regular commenter. I don't think he managed to make it to this one, perhaps. Uh, he's in the UK. I know I've got somebody else in the UK. Now we've got somebody in Greenland. I uh, almost 1 a.m. That's right. That's right. HD, I appreciate that, man. You're an awesome dude. Right now for me, it is 11 o'clock at night, roughly. So one hour, and that's it's 15 more. Uh, no, actually, I've gotten my shaves down to where my recordings are usually about 25, 27 minutes. Um and so this is longer than, but for a while there, there were 45 minutes when I was, uh, hadn't quite figured out if, how to streamline a few things. It's 11. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Major mince me that of, uh, of compadres here. Um, and I, I think I'm, I'm figuring out that, there's kind of two things going on. Sure, I'm shaving and maybe answering some questions and that kind of thing. But you guys, a lot of times, will have your own subjects going on on, uh, on the chat there. And that's just perfect. That's just tremendous. Uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> the Internet is crap right now. Santa must be clogging it up with downloading. All right. Oh, I'm, it looks like maybe I'm frozen in some areas. I wonder if my Wi-Fi has, uh, has, has, has worked. Let, let me do some typing. All right. See if that comes across a little bit easier. <laughs> oh, no.
Oh, uh, okay. Roger that. I have come back. Okay. And I mean, that's pretty much miraculous. We are sending a video signal. This is not just a tiny web page of a, a few uh, kilobytes of data. Um, this is a, a video stream, right? So I'm glad we came back right before the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wonder what kind of lag there is for, for Mr. Cook in, in China. But uh, there you go. Um, oh, okay. Loading, loading, <laughs> buffering. I, uh, as a holiday movie, we watch The Proposal about once a year in the holiday season with uh, Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. And, and uh, it's, now it's getting especially aged. It was aged back when it came out when she had to go and jump on the Internet to contact her business back in the, uh, in the continental U.S. And they had a America Online and you heard the modem dial up, you know, and that's even more. Uh, more of an anachronism now. Yes. Yeah, I think it's time to get to bed, folks. Uh, you guys take care. We will. Uh, oh, Die Hard. Yes, that's in my Christmas folder as well. I'm a, I'm a fan of that one. Yeah, guys, thanks for thanks for watching. I definitely enjoyed it myself. Thank you, guys. Major Mince Meat, Peter Cook, Sig, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, take care, and we'll sign off.